Hello and welcome back. Today I'm spending some more time on the shaper. Um, this is a manual shaper that I've made myself. I have a video series if you want to go and check it out and if you haven't seen it before. And when I originally built this shaper I said it was for cutting the internal splines and keyways that I would require on the mini cation project. So today I've decided I'm going to do some trials, work out how I'm going to cut them, keyways and splines, particularly on the rear hubs which I've made. Uh, the internal bore of those hubs is very small and so will require a very small spline. So this is going to be very much a trial. And if it doesn't work out, it may be that uh, I've made the shaper for nothing, but uh, it'll be a learning experience either way. So since the last time you saw this manual shaper, you'll have noticed I now have a angle plate on here which effectively gives me a bed which has T-slots in it, um, which is a much better surface to work on. Originally I made this tool holder which screws into the header there and then you can put a bit of tool steel in vertically to cut the top face but that's not going to work for splines and keyways we need to be able to cut inside so what I'm proposing to do um, I'm proposing on the rear hubs um, I've got one here this is a rear hub you can see what I was talking about it's got a 6mm 6 mil hole through the center and that is where I want to cut some small splines. I plan to cut six splines about half a mil deep and my plan is I've got a hex collet block um, with a 10 to 9 mil collet the R32 collet in there and my hope can go inside that collet. I'll need to pack the collet block up off the table but and then I can clamp it down. So then I'll be able to adjust the height and position of my hub. Obviously it'll need set up and then I need to cut the inside. So what I did is I bought some 10mm by 1mm tool steel and I've ground that down to give me a small small cutting tool which is 1mm thick and it's 6mm tall so that it will fit inside the hubs hopefully yep. So my plan with this is to make a tool holder which a bit like this it will be a bit of round bar with a thread on the end so we can thread into the head on the manual shaper. Instead of having a slot down the length it will have a hole up the middle with some grub screws so that, so that this cutting steel, this tool steel can slide inside and we'll lock it in position. I'm also, because obviously that bit of tail steel is then going to go in a round hole, I'm going to make like a half round plug to go in the side opposite the grub screws so this bit of tail steel will be pushed against the flat of the half round plug and it should keep it upright. First of all we need to make our tool holder to go in our shaper. So the idea of using a hex colour block means that um, I can then rotate the collet to the next face to give me the six splines that I want until I've done a full revolution. So the other thing I'm going to need is a fence in this direction so when I put my collet block back on for the next cut on the next face of the collet block I can push it up to it and get it back in the right position. So at the moment I'm thinking for that I'll just clamp my little one two three block 
down to the bed we'll get it set up indicated so it's running true with the travel of the ram So I've got the uh, rear hub set up on here now um, in the collet block. I've got a one, two, three block set up at the back here um, as my fence to keep that square and uh, just a clamp on the collet block to keep that in position. And as I said before, the idea is I can then rotate it to each side on that flat bottom um, to give me the six splines that I'm looking for. So here is my tool holder, the new tool holder that I've just made on the lathe. So before I put the camera on, I actually had to go at cutting a spline with this setup. And as you can maybe see, this one mil tool steel actually bent with the pressure. Um, I think it took too much of a cut and it bent. So what I've done is rather than use that same material again for it to bend again, um, I've sharpened the point of a bit of 4mm square tool steel. I've got a tip which is 4mm, sorry 1mm wide and I've just created a bit of relief on the bottom so that it can go the depth it needs which is only half a mil to cut the spline in the bottom so hopefully that will work better it's got a bit more strength to it um, as I say I probably took too much of a cut so I'm gonna take it easy I'm um, looking inside the hub I can see where it started to cut very lightly so I think I just need to take my time and take a little cut as possible each go we're only looking for a total of half a mil depth so we'll see how it goes the other thing I've done is rather than tap the end of this part I've put a threaded stud in there which means I can adjust the rotation of this to make sure I get it straight up and down
so I don't know how clear that is for you on your screen at home but it has sort of cut a groove just on that side there you can see it but it doesn't look like it's gone the full length of the hole and it looks as though the downward pressure because that cut was at the bottom it looks like it's maybe lost some downward pressure as it's travelled towards the back of the hole but there is a slot there I think I'm gonna think about this a bit more Okay, so I persisted on there a bit and um, I've stopped now just because I've broke my um, cutting tool so I'll need to um, re-grind a new one so I'm going to use that as a prompt to call this the end of part one. I think I've got some things that I need to improve. I think the main one is there's a little bit of play still in this uh, cutting head in the head of the shaper so I'm going to have a look at how I can improve the rigidity of that maybe that I can put some locking screws in the head somewhere whether down here or in the front face but if I'm honest when I start to look at the tool steel especially that bit of 1mm by 6mm tool steel that I had initially I, I didn't think I was even going to get um, this close as you can see some of them have started to wander a bit but I think that was down to the flex or the bit of movement in the head of the shaper so if I can fix that I think it would be a lot better so yeah I'm going to call that the end of part one so thanks for watching and hopefully next time we can improve on that um, I have been thinking about what I could do if I can't cut these small splines for the drive on these rear hubs and my backup plan is to have a go at a rotary broaching a hex in there and having a hex drive on the end of the drive shaft on the rear wheels but um, yeah, if you've got any ideas on what I could do to improve it, um, please let me know. So, thanks for watching. I'll see you again next time. Cheers.